Love Unbound, Non-Monogamy, Monogamy, and Travel's Impact on Relationships. Today's episode promises to be an enlightening journey as we explore the nuances of ethical non-monogamy, the value of monogamy in today's world, and the transformative power of travel on our relationships and personal development. We'll also talk about cheating in relationships. I did a separate podcast episode about this, so basically I'll just be adding that information at the end of this episode. In part one, we'll uncover the principles and appeal of ethical non-monogamy, dismantling common misconceptions, and emphasizing the importance of communication, trust, and boundaries in these relationships. We'll also discuss the challenges of navigating breakups and heartache in the context of ethical non-monogamy. In part two, we'll focus on monogamous relationships, exploring the search for compatibility, authenticity, and genuine connection. We'll also examine the delicate balance between monogamous commitment and non-monogamous preferences and the importance of meeting each other's needs in any relationship, whether monogamous or not. In part three, we'll embark on a journey of self-discovery through travel and how it impacts our relationships. We'll discuss the transformative power of stepping out of our comfort zones, learning from different cultures, and fostering relationship growth. We'll also share insights on maintaining relationships while embracing personal development and integrating the lessons learned from our travels into everyday life. Finally, in part four, we will examine cheating in both monogamous and non-monogamous relationships. This will be a long podcast, and some of this may sound repetitive since there's a bit of an overlap in the books we recommend for further exploration and some common themes. However, as repetition aids learning, and some people may skip around or listen to smaller sections at a time, we felt it essential to leave the overlap as it is. So please bear with us on that. So sit back, relax, and join us on this thought-provoking journey as we explore the intricacies of relationships, love, and personal growth in today's ever-evolving world. Welcome to the first part of our four-part episode on the complexities of modern relationships. In this episode, we'll explore the concepts of ethical non-monogamy, its benefits and challenges, and how it can provide valuable lessons for navigating relationships in today's world. As usual, our sources will be listed in the podcast description. Part 1. Ethical Non-Monogamy and Navigating Relationship Boundaries Ethical Non-Monogamy, Definition and Principles Today, we're diving deep into the topic of ethical non-monogamy. We'll explore its definition, principles, and how it differs from other relationship structures. So let's get started. Ethical non-monogamy is an umbrella term that encompasses various relationship structures in which individuals openly and consensually engage in multiple romantic or sexual relationships. Conley, Ziegler, Moores, Matzik, and Rubin, 2012. It is founded on open communication, consent, trust, and respect for all parties involved. Barker and Landridge, 2010. Types of ethical non-monogamous relationships include polyamory, open relationships, swinging, and relationship anarchy. Chef, 2014. While each style has unique characteristics, they share the common foundation of ethical non-monogamy. There does exist an interesting and less common offshoot of polyamory called solo polyamory. From being exposed to someone labeling themselves as such, and from much further research and study, it has become apparent that this lifestyle choice is likely due to having an insecure attachment style. While we won't dive into that offshoot of polyamory in today's episode, we will explore this lifestyle choice in depth in a future episode. Ethical non-monogamy challenges the traditional narrative of monogamy, which emphasizes exclusivity in romantic and sexual relationships. Barker and Langridge, 2010. It is crucial to differentiate ethical non-monogamy from infidelity or cheating, as the latter involves dishonesty and a breach of trust. In contrast, ethical non-monogamy emphasizes transparency and consent among all parties involved. V. and Rickert, 2014. Some fundamental principles of ethical non-monogamy include Consent. All parties involved must provide informed and enthusiastic approval to the relationship structure and any new relationships that may arise. V. and Record, 2014. Open communication. Honest and open communication is essential for navigating the complexities of multiple relationships and addressing any issues that may arise. Barker and Langridge, 2010. Trust. Establishing and maintaining trust is crucial in ethically non-monogamous relationships, as all parties rely on one another to be truthful and respectful of boundaries set for themselves and their collective agreements. Conley and others, 2012. Flexibility. Ethical non-monogamous relationships often require flexibility, as individuals may need to adapt to changing circumstances and negotiate new agreements. Chef, 2014. Emotional Intelligence. Successfully managing multiple relationships requires a high level of emotional intelligence, including empathy, self-awareness, 
and the ability to control one's emotions and manage those of others. Winston, 2017. Autonomy. Ethical non-monogamy emphasizes the importance of personal independence and the freedom for individuals to make their own choices in their relationships. Barker and Langdridge, 2010. Now that we've covered the definition and principles of ethical non-monogamy, it's essential to recognize that each honest non-monogamous relationship is unique, as are the individuals involved. While some people may thrive in such relationships, others prefer monogamy. People must explore their relationship preferences and desires and communicate openly and honestly with their partners. In this episode, we've discussed the definition and principles of ethical non-monogamy and the importance of consent, open communication, trust, flexibility, emotional intelligence, and autonomy. By understanding these foundational concepts, we can better appreciate the complexity and diversity of ethically non-monogamous relationships and the individuals who choose to engage in them. The Appeal of Ethical Non-Monogamy, Freedom, Flexibility, and Growth In the last section, we discussed the definition and principles of ethical non-monogamy. Now we'll explore the appeal of ethical non-monogamy and how it can offer freedom, flexibility, and personal growth for those who engage in it. Let's dive in. Ethical non-monogamy encompasses various relationship styles, including polyamory, open relationships, and relationship anarchy. For many people, the appeal of ethical non-monogamy lies in the freedom, flexibility, and opportunities for personal growth that it can provide. Freedom and Autonomy Ethical non-monogamous relationships emphasize personal independence and the freedom to explore connections with multiple partners. Barker and Langridge, 2010 This freedom can be liberating for individuals who may feel constrained by traditional monogamous expectations and desire the opportunity to explore their relationship preferences and desires. Flexibility Ethical non-monogamous relationships are often more flexible than monogamous ones, allowing individuals to create unique relationship structures that best suit their needs and desires. Chef, 2014. This flexibility can lead to more satisfying and fulfilling relationships as individuals can negotiate and adapt their connections to meet their changing needs. Personal growth. Ethical non-monogamy can also offer opportunities for personal growth as individuals are encouraged to develop strong communication skills, emotional intelligence, and the ability to navigate complex relationship dynamics. Winston, 2017. Additionally, engaging in multiple relationships can provide a broader range of emotional support and resources contributing to an individual's overall well-being. While ethical non-monogamy offers many potential benefits, it's important to note that it's not a one-size-fits-all solution for everyone. Individuals must assess their needs, desires, and capabilities when considering whether ethical non-monogamy is the right choice. It's essential for individuals to communicate openly and honestly with their partners and to evaluate and adapt their relationship structures as needed continually. In this section, we've explored the appeal of ethical non-monogamy, including the freedom, flexibility, and personal growth it can offer those who choose to engage in it. Honest non-monogamous relationships can provide a liberating alternative to traditional monogamous expectations and allow individuals to create unique relationship structures that best suit their needs and desires. Overcoming Common Misconceptions In our previous section, we've discussed the definition, principles, and appeal of ethical non-monogamy. Now we'll tackle common misconceptions about ethical non-monogamy and offer insights on overcoming these misunderstandings. Let's do this! Despite the increasing visibility and acceptance of ethical non-monogamous relationships, there are still many misconceptions that persist. This section will address some of these common misunderstandings and provide accurate information to help foster greater understanding and empathy for those who engage in ethical non-monogamous relationships. Misconception. Ethical non-monogamy is just an excuse for promiscuity. Fact. Ethical non-monogamy is not about unlimited sexual freedom or promiscuity, hence the ethical part. It's about fostering honest, consensual relationships with multiple partners. Chef, 2014. People who engage in ethically non-monogamous relationships prioritize open communication, trust, and consent among all parties involved. Misconception. People in ethically non-monogamous relationships cannot commit, or are afraid of commitment. Fact. Ethical non-monogamy does not equate to a fear of commitment or an inability to form deep connections, although it does seem that so-called solo polyamory indeed might, according to the research, Instead, people who engage in ethically non-monogamous relationships often have multiple committed relationships, demonstrating their capacity for loyalty and emotional investment. Barker and Langridge, 2010. Misconception. Ethical non-monogamous relationships are inherently unstable and doomed to fail. Fact. 
Like monogamous relationships, ethical non-monogamous relationships have unique challenges and successes. Research has shown that honest non-monogamous relationships can be just as stable and satisfying as monogamous relationships, providing clear communication, trust, and mutual respect among all parties involved. Moores, Matzik, Ziegler, Rubin, and Conley, 2013. Overcoming these misconceptions is essential to fostering greater understanding and acceptance of ethical non-monogamy. By challenging these misunderstandings and providing accurate information, we can help provide a more inclusive and empathetic society that recognizes and respects the diverse range of relationship styles and choices. In this section, we've addressed common misconceptions about ethical non-monogamy and offered insights on overcoming these misunderstandings. In our next section, we will discuss the importance of communication, trust, and boundaries in honest non-monogamous relationships and provide tips and strategies for maintaining healthy, successful non-monogamous relationships. Communication, trust, boundaries, and agreements in ethical non-monogamous relationships. Our previous section discussed the definition, principles, appeal, and misconceptions of ethical non-monogamy. We'll focus on communication, trust, boundaries, and agreements in honest non-monogamous relationships in this next section. Let's get started. Ethical non-monogamy relies on a solid foundation of open communication, trust, and clear boundaries to ensure the health and success of all relationships involved. In this episode, we will explore the importance of these elements and how to cultivate and maintain them in ethical non-monogamous relationships. Ethical non-monogamy relies on a solid foundation of open communication, trust, clear boundaries, and agreements to ensure the health and success of all relationships involved. In this episode, we will explore the importance of these four elements and guide how to cultivate and maintain them in ethical non-monogamous relationships. Communication. Effective communication is crucial in any relationship and even more so in ethically non-monogamous relationships where multiple partners and unique dynamics can create additional complexities. Open, honest, and respectful dialogue helps prevent misunderstandings, fosters emotional intimacy, and ensures everyone's needs and boundaries are respected. Libriola, 2013. Trust. Trust is a cornerstone of any healthy relationship and is vital in ethical non-monogamy. Trust allows partners to feel secure, respected, and valued, fostering emotional intimacy and stability. Building trust in ethically non-monogamous relationships involves consistently demonstrating honesty, transparency, and reliability. Tiramino, 2008. Boundaries. Establishing and respecting boundaries is essential in ethically non-monogamous relationships. Limits can be physical, emotional, or time-related and help to protect the well-being and autonomy of all individuals involved. They also create a framework for expectations and agreements within the relationship, allowing everyone to understand and navigate their relationships with clarity and confidence. Easton and Hardy, 2009. Agreements. Agreements are an integral part of successful ethical non-monogamy. Agreements are mutually consented decisions that define the parameters of the relationships involved and are often used to establish and maintain individual personal boundaries. Agreements can cover a wide range of topics, such as sexual health practices, time management, and how to handle potential conflicts. They provide a sense of security and structure, allowing all parties involved to navigate their relationships with a clear understanding of expectations and responsibilities. It's important that these agreements are not static. They should be revisited and revised as needed to ensure they continue to serve the needs and desires of all parties involved. Transparency, consent, and respect for individual autonomy should always be at the forefront when creating and revising agreements. Barker and Langridge, 2010, Chef, 2014. To cultivate and maintain healthy communication, trust, boundaries, and agreements in ethically non-monogamous relationships, consider the following tips. Practice active listening. Truly hear your partner's thoughts, feelings, and concerns without interrupting or imposing your perspective. Be transparent. Share your feelings, desires, and concerns openly and honestly. Encourage regular check-ins. Schedule standard times to discuss the state of your relationships, address any issues, and celebrate successes. Negotiate agreements. Collaboratively establish agreements that respect everyone's needs, boundaries, and desires. Honor commitments. Demonstrate trustworthiness by following promises and maintaining agreed-upon agreements. This section explored the importance of communication, trust, boundaries, and agreements in ethically non-monogamous relationships. The following section will discuss navigating breakups and heartache in ethical non-monogamy and how to heal and grow from these experiences. Navigating breakup and heartache in ethical non-monogamy. Also, dodging narcissistic abusers and moving forward. 
Now we'll explore breakups and heartaches in the context of ethical non-monogamy. We'll also discuss how to identify and avoid narcissistic abusers and understand why such individuals aren't worth your time. Breakups and Heartache in Ethical Non-Monogamy Ethical non-monogamy encompasses various relationship structures such as polyamory, open relationships, and swinging where all parties know and consent to multiple romantic or sexual relationships. Teor Amino, 2008 As with any relationship, ethical non-monogamous relationships can experience breakups and heartache. Some unique aspects of navigating these situations include managing feelings for multiple partners and working through interconnected relationship dynamics. Chef, 2014 in her book, The Ethical Slut, Dulcie Easton suggests that open communication, emotional resilience, and self-care are essential in navigating breakups in non-monogamous relationships, Easton and Hardy, 2009. By fostering open dialogue and focusing on personal well-being, individuals can better manage their emotions and work towards healing. Narcissistic Abusers in Non-Monogamous Relationships In any relationship, awareness of potential emotional manipulation and abuse is essential. Narcissistic individuals, characterized by their grandiosity, lack of empathy, and constant need for admiration, are particularly harmful. American Psychiatric Association, 2013. These characteristics may manifest differently in non-monogamous relationships. Narcissists may use their multiple partners to feed their individual egos and manipulate others. In a future episode, we will discuss spotting and avoiding these people on social media. Dr. Romani Devasula, a clinical psychologist and expert on narcissism, advises that, nar advises that narcissistic abusers use tactics such as gaslighting, triangulation, and exploitation in non-monogamous relationships. Devasula, 2018. For example, they may pit partners against each other, creating jealousy and insecurity. It's crucial to recognize these behaviors and understand that they are forms of manipulation rather than genuine expressions of love or affection. Narcissists can be incredibly charismatic and magnetic, often mastering the art of charm, flattery, and seduction. They can make you feel extraordinarily special, as if you are the only person who truly matters. Their initial grandiose displays of love and attention, known as love bombing, can be intoxicating, leaving you to believe you found an extraordinary connection. However, this is a manipulative tactic to secure your adoration, loyalty, and ultimately your submission. Once they feel secure in your attachment, the narcissist begins to devalue and degrade you, causing severe emotional and psychological harm. This could manifest as constant criticism, gaslighting, emotional neglect, or even outright emotional or physical abuse. They will often project onto you, to the point where you actually start believing that you are the narcissist. If this happens, a psychologist or experienced therapist can professionally assess you for levels of narcissism. Please note that trained mental health professionals should administer and interpret these tools. They include the Narcissistic Personality Inventory, or NPI. This is the most commonly used measure of narcissism in social psychological research. It consists of 40 items and measures various components of narcissism, including superiority, exhibitionism, entitlement, vanity, authority, and exploitativeness. Raskin and Terry, 1988. The Malignant Narcissism Inventory, or MNI. This instrument assesses the more pathological forms of narcissism associated with malignancy, such as antisocial behavior, paranoia, and sadism. Gacano and others, 1992. The Personality Diagnostic Questionnaire, or PDQ-4. This self-report questionnaire assesses various personality disorders, including NPD, as defined in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM. Heiler, 1994. Structured Clinical Interview for DSM Disorders, or SCID-2. This is a diagnostic exam used to determine personality disorders, including NPD, as laid out in the DSM-4 Axis 2, first and others 1997. Note that the Structural Clinical Interview for DSM-5, or SCID-5, published in 2013, is the updated version that most clinicians will likely use. The Pathological Narcissism Inventory, or PNI. This measures both grandiose and vulnerable aspects of pathological narcissism, Pincus and others, 2009. Again, while these tools can help in assessing narcissism and other personality disorders, they should be used by a trained professional to ensure accurate diagnosis and treatment recommendations. Being discarded by a narcissist, once they've extracted all they believe they can from the relationship, can be devastating. It can leave you questioning your self-worth and reality due to the manipulative tactics employed throughout the relationship. The recovery process often requires time, self-care, and professional help to rebuild the healthy sense of self and to overcome the trauma of such a psychologically damaging relationship. It's important to remember that if you've experienced this, 
It does not reflect your worth or your ability to be loved genuinely. Instead, it demonstrates the narcissist's inability to form healthy, empathetic, and mutual relationships. Avoiding Narcissistic Abusers and Rationalizing Their Worth To avoid narcissistic abusers, look for red flags such as a lack of empathy, excessive self-focus, and a pattern of manipulative behavior. Devastula, 2018 Establishing boundaries and seeking support from friends or mental health professionals can also help avoid or extricate yourself from these destructive relationships. It's important to understand that the manipulative behaviors of narcissistic abusers reflect their insecurities and inability to form genuine connections. Twenge and Campbell, 2009. Recognizing this can help you rationalize that these individuals aren't worth your time or emotional investment. Instead, focus on building healthy relationships with partners who demonstrate empathy, trust, and respect. Navigating breakups and heartache and ethical non-monogamy can be challenging. Still, Open communication, emotional resilience, and self-care can help individuals work through these situations. Awareness of narcissistic abusers and their tactics is essential to protecting yourself and fostering healthy, loving relationships. Remember, you deserve nurturing, supportive, and respectful relationships. Healing and moving forward from breakups and narcissistic abuse. Recovering from breakups and narcissistic abuse in the context of ethical non-monogamy can be a complex process, but several strategies can help. Dr. Melanie Tates, a clinical psychologist, recommends the following approaches to foster healing and growth after a breakup or abusive relationship. Tates, 2012. Prioritize self-care. Focus on your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. This focus may include exercise, healthy eating, getting adequate sleep, and engaging in hobbies or activities you enjoy. Seek support. Reach out to friends, family, or support groups to share your experiences and feelings. In ethical non-monogamy, specialized support groups or online communities like the Polyamory Support Network can provide a safe space to discuss your unique experiences. Reflect on the relationship. Identify patterns that led to the breakup or abuse. Consider how you can learn from these experiences to create and genuinely appreciate healthier relationships in the future. Set boundaries. Establish boundaries with future partners and communicate your expectations openly and honestly. These boundaries and communication can help protect you from future manipulation or abuse. Engage in self-compassion. Recognize that healing is a process and that it's natural to feel a range of emotions from sadness to anger. Be kind to yourself as you navigate this journey. Building healthy relationships and ethical non-monogamy. As you heal and move forward, focus on building healthier relationships within ethical non-monogamy. Experts in the field, like Dr. Elizabeth Sheff, suggest the following tips for fostering solid and loving connections. Chef, 2014. Open communication. Be transparent about your feelings, needs, and boundaries with all partners. This transparency will help create trust and respect in your relationships. Emotional intelligence. Develop your ability to understand, manage, and express your emotions as well as empathize with your partner's feelings. Flexibility. Embrace change and adapt to the evolving dynamics of your relationships. This flexibility can help you navigate the complexities of ethical non-monogamy. Compersion. Cultivate a sense of happiness for your partner's joy and success, even if it doesn't directly involve you. This cultivation of compersion can help counteract feelings of jealousy or insecurity. Balance. Strive for a balance between your own needs and the needs of your partners, recognizing that everyone's emotional well-being is essential for a committed, healthy relationship. Remember that healing from breakups and narcissistic abuse and ethical non-monogamy is possible with self-care, support, and reflection. You can foster fulfilling and supportive connections by building healthy relationships and embracing open communication, emotional intelligence, and balance. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. If you are enjoying this discussion, please consider subscribing to future episodes on love, relationships, personal growth, and many other topics we will tackle as time passes. Let's move on to the next section. Personal growth and embracing lessons from past relationships. As you move forward in your journey, it's essential to embrace the lessons you've learned from past relationships, including breakups and experiences with narcissistic abusers. Personal growth is critical to healing and building healthier connections in the future. Some strategies for personal growth after breakups or abusive relationships in the context of ethical non-monogamy include self-reflection. Reflect on your past relationships and understand your role in the dynamics. 
Consider what you can learn from these experiences to help you grow and make better choices in future relationships. Develop new skills. Engage in activities that build your self-esteem, such as learning new skills or pursuing personal interests. This development can help you feel more confident and independent, which is essential for maintaining healthy relationships. Seek professional help. If you find navigating the healing process challenging or building healthier connections, consider seeking a mental health professional specializing in relationships and ethical non-monogamy. Embrace vulnerability. Learning to trust again after experiencing heartache or abuse can be difficult, but embracing vulnerability is essential to building deep, meaningful connections with others. Practice opening up to your partners and sharing your feelings, fears, and desires. Cultivate gratitude. Focus on the positive aspects of your life and relationships and practice gratitude for the love, support, and connections you have. This focus can help shift your perspective and encourage you to appreciate the valuable lessons you've learned from past experiences. Remember that personal growth and embracing lessons from past relationships are crucial steps in healing from breakups and narcissistic abuse within ethical non-monogamy. By focusing on self-reflection, developing new skills, and cultivating gratitude, you can create a foundation for a healthier, more fulfilling relationships moving forward. Learning from ethical non-monogamous relationships, applying lessons to monogamous relationships. This section will discuss the lessons from ethical non-monogamous relationships and how they can be applied to monogamous relationships. As we delve into this fascinating topic, we'll explore communication, trust, boundaries, and more. Remember that love comes in many forms. Embrace the journey and let love guide you. So without further ado, let's begin. Communication in Ethical Non-Monogamous Relationships One of the critical aspects of successful ethical non-monogamous relationships is open and honest communication. In her book, The Ethical Slut, Dulcie Easton emphasizes the importance of transparency in discussing feelings, desires, and boundaries with all partners, Easton and Hardy, 2009. Dr. Elizabeth Sheff, a sociologist and relationship expert, also highlights the importance of communication in her book, The Polyamorists Next Door, Sheff, 2014. Applying Communication Lessons to Monogamous Relationships Monogamous relationships can benefit from the communication practices found in ethical non-monogamy. By fostering open dialogue, partners can create a solid foundation of trust and understanding. Some tips for enhancing communication in monogamous relationships include regular check-ins, Schedule time to discuss your feelings, needs, and desires with your partner to maintain a strong connection. Active listening. When your partner shares their thoughts and feelings, listen attentively and empathetically without interrupting or judging. Emotional intelligence. Develop the ability to identify, understand, and manage your own emotions as well as empathize with your partner's feelings. Goldman, 1995. Trust and emotional intimacy in ethical non-monogamous relationships. Trust is another vital component of ethical non-monogamous relationships. Tristan Teormino, a relationship expert and author of Opening Up, discusses how trust is essential for maintaining emotional intimacy and navigating the complexities of multiple relationships. Teormino, 2008. Applying trust and emotional intimacy lessons to monogamous relationships. Monogamous relationships can also benefit from cultivating trust and emotional intimacy. To apply these lessons to your monogamous relationship, consider the following. Be vulnerable. Open up to your partner about your fears, hopes, and dreams. This vulnerability fosters deeper emotional connections. Brown, 2012. Keep your promises. Be reliable and follow through on your commitments to your partner, demonstrating that they can trust you. Cultivate emotional safety. Create an environment where both partners feel safe to express their feelings and desires without fear of judgment or rejection. Boundaries, agreements, and personal growth in ethical non-monogamous relationships. Boundaries, and especially agreements, are crucial in ethically non-monogamous relationships. They help maintain balance and ensure that all partners' needs are respected. Easton and Hardy, 2009. Personal growth is also essential to these relationships as individuals learn to navigate emotions and foster healthy connections with multiple partners. Chef, 2014. Applying boundaries and personal growth lessons to monogamous relationships. Boundaries and personal growth are equally crucial in monogamous relationships. To apply these concepts, consider the following tips. Establish boundaries. Communicate your needs and limits with your partner and respect their limitations. Prioritize self-care. Focus on your well-being and personal growth, engaging in activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Encourage your partner's growth. Support them in their growth journey, allowing them the space and encouragement to pursue their interests and passions. Embracing compersion in ethical non-monogamous relationships. 
Compersion, often the opposite of jealousy, is the feeling of happiness for your partner's joy and success even when it doesn't directly involve you. Chef, 2014. This concept is fundamental in ethically non-monogamous relationships as it helps partners navigate the complexities of multiple connections. Applying Compersion Lessons to Monogamous Relationships Although monogamous relationships don't involve multiple romantic connections, the concept of compersion can still be applied. By embracing compersion, partners can develop a more supportive and nurturing relationship dynamic. To cultivate compersion in monogamous relationships, consider the following. Celebrate your partner's achievements. Be genuinely happy for your partner's success, even if they don't directly involve you, and celebrate their accomplishments together. Let go of competition. Recognize that your partner's happiness and success do not diminish your own. Avoid the urge to compete within the relationship. Develop empathy. Practice putting yourself in your partner's shoes and understanding their emotions, which can help you experience compersion more readily. It's essential to recognize that if someone has strong narcissistic traits, forming and maintaining healthy relationships, including ethical non-monogamous ones, can be challenging. Narcissists often push people away, constantly seek validation from others, or find themselves in relationships with fellow narcissists, creating a turbulent dynamic similar to two performers fighting for the spotlight. These behaviors result in a cycle of loneliness, fear, and a lack of genuine self-understanding. Unfortunately for most true narcissists, the likelihood of change is slim. They are often unable or unwilling to engage in the necessary self-reflection and personal growth to foster healthier relationships and lead more fulfilling lives. Although the prospects for change may be limited, it's essential to acknowledge the potential for growth in some cases while being realistic about the challenges inherent to the narcissist's life. Ethical non-monogamous relationships offer valuable lessons that can be applied to monogamous relationships, enhancing communication, trust, boundaries, personal growth, and emotional intimacy. By learning from these practices, monogamous couples can foster more robust, fulfilling connections. Remember, love is a journey. We can all learn from one another's experiences. In this section, we delved into ethical non-monogamy. We learned the importance of communication, trust, and setting relationship boundaries. In the next area, we'll explore the intricacies of monogamous relationships and how they can coexist with non-monogamous preferences. Part 2. Monogamy, Compatibility, and Finding an Authentic Connection Part 2 of our episode will discuss monogamous relationships and the challenges of finding a compatible, authentic partner. We'll also touch on how monogamous relationships can coexist with non-monogamous preferences. The Value of Monogamy in Today's World This section delves into monogamy, exploring its value in our modern world. We'll draw on research from various sources to provide a balanced and informative discussion as we consider different perspectives. Monogamy as a concept has been around for millennia. It's a practice deeply rooted in our history and culture, potentially dating back to the earliest human societies, Fisher, 1992. Monogamy is often considered the cornerstone of romantic relationships, offering stability, commitment, and trust. But is it still relevant in today's rapidly changing society? And what does the research say about the benefits of monogamy? To better understand the value of monogamy, let's first consider its biological and anthropological roots. Dr. Helen Fisher, a biological anthropologist and researcher at the Kinsey Institute, suggests that monogamy might have evolved for early humans to protect their offspring and ensure survival. Fisher, 1992. Pair bonding allows both parents to share responsibilities, provide resources, and increase their chances of raising successful offspring. Fisher, 1992. In today's world, the idea of monogamy is still closely tied to the concept of family. According to a study by the National Marriage Project at the University of Virginia, Couples in monogamous relationships report higher levels of happiness, mental health, and overall well-being than their non-monogamous counterparts, W. Bradford, Wilcox, and Jeffrey Dew, 2012. The study also found that monogamous couples were more likely to invest time and effort in their relationships, contributing to increased satisfaction and stability. One of the primary reasons people value monogamy is the emotional security it provides. Monogamous commitment fosters trust and emotional intimacy, 
allowing partners to be vulnerable with one another, Perel, 2006. In her book, Mating in Captivity, psychotherapist Esther Perel explains that this emotional safety is crucial for deepening connections and maintaining long-term relationships. Moreover, monogamy has been linked to better health outcomes. A study published in the Journal of Marriage and Family found that married individuals had lower rates of alcohol abuse, drug use, and depression than unmarried individuals. Waite and Gallagher, 2000. This study suggests that the stability and support offered by monogamous relationships can positively impact mental and physical health. However, it's essential to acknowledge that monogamy may not be the right choice for everyone. Some people prefer polyamory or other non-monogamous relationships, which can provide different benefits and experiences. For instance, polyamorous relationships can offer increased flexibility and a more extensive support network. Chef, 2014. Each individual must understand their needs and desires when choosing a relationship style. In conclusion, monogamy offers numerous benefits to individuals, couples, and society. Monogamy remains a valuable relationship model from its evolutionary roots to its role in promoting stability and emotional security. However, it's crucial to remember that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to relationships. When choosing a partner or relationship style, people must consider the preferences and circumstances. The following section will explore alternative relationship models, delving into polyamory, open relationships, and more. We'll discuss how these models can offer unique benefits and challenges and examine the cultural and societal factors that influence our perception of them. Keep listening as we expand our understanding of how people form connections and find fulfillment in their romantic lives. We invite you to engage in thoughtful conversations with those around you about the topics we are discussing today. Share your thoughts on the value of monogamy and listen to the perspectives of others to deepen your understanding and empathy. We also encourage you to explore additional resources to further educate yourself. Some excellent books and articles to read include The Monogamy Gap, Men, Love, and the Reality of Cheating by Eric Anderson. Sex at Dawn, How We Mate, Why We Stray, and What It Means for Modern Relationships by Christopher Ryan and Casilda Jetha. And Rewriting the Rules, An Integrative Guide to Love, Sex, and Relationships by Meg John Barker. Lastly, everyone's journey in love and relationships is unique, and it's essential to respect and honor the choices others make, even if they differ from ours. As we navigate the complex world of relationships, let's strive for understanding, openness, and empathy, fostering a more inclusive and compassionate society. The Search for Compatibility – How to Find the Right Partner In this section, we'll delve into compatibility, discuss how to find the right partner, and explore what truly matters when choosing someone to share your life with. We'll draw on research from various sources to provide a balanced and informative discussion. Finding the right partner can be challenging, and the search for compatibility is a crucial aspect of the process. But what does compatibility really mean? How can we determine what matters most when selecting a life partner and what factors don't matter? Compatibility is generally defined as the ability of two or more individuals to live together harmoniously and share a deep, meaningful connection. According to Dr. John Gottman, a renowned relationship expert and researcher, compatibility is built on the foundation of shared values, interests, goals, and effective communication and conflict resolution skills. Gottman, 1999. A study by Dr. Samantha Joel at Western University found that the three essential traits people look for in a partner are warmth, trustworthiness, and attractiveness. Joel and others, 2018. Warmth and trustworthiness are crucial components of emotional intimacy and security, while attractiveness can encompass physical appearance and personal charisma. However, it's important to remember that individual preferences can vary greatly, and what one person finds attractive or essential may not matter to another. Consider reflecting on your values, goals, and desires in a relationship to determine what matters most. Dr. Eli Finkel, a psychologist and relationship researcher at Northwestern University, argues that while compatibility is essential, Personal growth is equally crucial in successful relationships, Finkel and others, 2014. This argument means that in addition to seeking a partner with similar values and interests, it's essential to find someone who supports and encourages your personal development and vice versa. So what doesn't matter when choosing a partner? In the grand scheme, external factors such as wealth, social status, and physical appearance should not be the primary drivers in selecting a life partner. While these factors may play a role in initial attraction, they don't guarantee long-term compatibility or happiness. Now that we've discussed the factors contributing to compatibility, how can we find the right partner? Here are some strategies to help you on your journey. Number one, know yourself. Before seeking a compatible partner, it's essential to have a clear understanding of your values, goals, and desires. 
This self-awareness will help you identify potential partners who align with your priorities. 2. Be open and authentic. Present your authentic self rather than trying to fit a mold or impress others when meeting new people or dating. Authenticity is critical to forming genuine connections and identifying compatibility. 3. Prioritize emotional intelligence. Look for a partner with empathy, self-awareness, and practical communication skills. These traits are essential for navigating the challenges that inevitably arise in long-term relationships. 4. Seek shared experiences. Engage in activities that reflect your interests and values to increase your chances of meeting like-minded individuals. Shared experiences can also help you assess compatibility more accurately. Remember that finding the right partner requires deeply understanding your values and desires and recognizing the traits contributing to long-term compatibility. While external factors may be tempting, focusing on emotional intelligence, shared values, and personal growth will ultimately lead to more fulfilling and successful relationships. In our upcoming section, we'll continue to explore various aspects of relationships from maintaining a healthy connection to navigating the complexities of modern dating. As you continue your journey towards finding the right partner, remember that relationships are dynamic and evolving. It's essential to stay open to growth and change, individually and as a couple, throuple, polycule, etc. Embrace the opportunity to learn from your experiences and continually refine your understanding of what compatibility means to you. In the meantime, we encourage you to engage in thoughtful conversations with those around you about the topics we've discussed today. Share your thoughts on compatibility and listen to the perspective of others to deepen your understanding and empathy. For further reading and exploration, we recommend the following books and articles. The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by Dr. John Gottman and Nan Silver. The All or Nothing Marriage, How the Best Marriages Work by Dr. Eli Finkel. And Attached, The New Science of Adult Attachment and How It Can Help You Find and Keep Love by Dr. Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. By seeking knowledge, fostering self-awareness, and embracing authenticity, you'll be better equipped to navigate the search for a compatible partner and build a strong foundation for a lasting relationship. We hope you are finding today's episode insightful and thought-provoking. Remember to subscribe to our podcast to catch all the episodes. Feel free to leave a review or share your thoughts on our social media channels. You can also email us at askinformationforlife at gmail.com with any questions or ideas for future episodes. We always strive to give credit where credit is due. Stay informed, stay curious, and keep exploring the world around you. Authenticity in Relationships, Recognizing Genuine Connections This section will discuss authenticity in relationships and how to recognize genuine connections and identify false ones. As always, we'll draw on research from various sources to provide a balanced and informative discussion. Authenticity is a crucial component of healthy and meaningful relationships. Being authentic means presenting your true self, including your thoughts, emotions, and experiences without fearing judgment or rejection. Genuine connections are built on trust, vulnerability, and acceptance. But how can we distinguish between authentic relationships and false ones? Dr. Brene Brown, a research professor at the University of Houston and a leading expert on vulnerability and authenticity, emphasizes the importance of exposure in forming deep and genuine connections. Brown, 2012. According to Brown, vulnerability allows us to show our true selves, fostering empathy, trust, and emotional intimacy. To recognize genuine connections, consider the following indicators. Emotional openness. Authentic relationships are characterized by the willingness of both partners to share their emotions and thoughts openly without fear of judgment or criticism. Active listening. In genuine connections, both partners listen attentively and empathetically to each other, demonstrating a genuine interest in understanding the other person's perspective. Mutual support and encouragement. True connections involve partners supporting each other's personal growth and well-being, celebrating successes, and offering encouragement during challenging times. Trust and emotional safety. Authentic relationships provide a safe space for vulnerability. Both partners feel secure in sharing their true selves. On the other hand, false connections often involve deceit, manipulation, or superficiality. These relationships may appear authentic on the surface, but lack the depth and emotional intimacy that genuine connections offer. Some signs of false connections include Emotional guardedness One or both partners may be reluctant to share their true feelings or experiences, preventing the development of emotional intimacy. Superficial communication Conversations may revolve around trivial topics or gossip with little exploration of more profound thoughts or emotions. Imbalance of power 
False connections may involve one partner dominating the relationship or making decisions without considering the other person's needs or feelings. Lack of empathy. Inauthentic relationships often lack empathy and understanding, with one or both partners showing little interest in the other person's perspective or well-being. So how can we cultivate authenticity in our relationships and foster genuine connections? Practice self-awareness. Engage in self-reflection to better understand your thoughts, emotions, and values, making you more open and genuine in your relationships. Embrace vulnerability. Be willing to share your true self with others, including your insecurities and fears. This openness fosters trust and emotional intimacy. Prioritize active listening. Make an effort to listen attentively and empathetically to your partner, demonstrating a genuine interest in their thoughts and feelings. Cultivate empathy. Develop your ability to understand and share the emotions of others, which will strengthen your emotional connections. In conclusion, recognizing and fostering authenticity in relationships is essential for building genuine connections that provide emotional intimacy, support, and growth. We can create lasting and meaningful relationships by practicing self-awareness, embracing vulnerability, and cultivating empathy. As you continue your journey toward cultivating authenticity in your relationships, remember that genuine connections are built on trust, vulnerability, and emotional openness. Embracing these qualities not only helps you recognize and form authentic relationships, but also enriches your life and the lives of those around you. In the meantime, we encourage you to engage in thoughtful conversations with those around you and not only to share your thoughts on authenticity and relationships, but also to listen to the perspectives of others to deepen your understanding and empathy. For further reading and exploration, we recommend the following books and articles. Daring Greatly, How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Love, Parent, and Lead by Dr. Brene Brown. The Gifts of Imperfection, Let Go of Who You Think You're Supposed to Be and Embrace Who You Are also by Dr. Brene Brown, and Authentic, How to Be Yourself and Why It Matters, by Dr. Stephen Joseph. By seeking knowledge, fostering self-awareness, and embracing authenticity, you'll be better equipped to navigate the complexities of relationships and build genuine connections that provide lasting emotional intimacy, support, and growth. Balancing Monogamous Commitment with Non-Monogamous Preferences this section will discuss maintaining a monogamous commitment while respecting non-monogamous preferences, which I don't hear about too often. We'll draw on research from various sources to provide a balanced and informative discussion. As we've seen, relationships are complex, and individuals' preferences regarding monogamy and non-monogamy can vary greatly. While some individuals prefer strictly monogamous relationships, others may choose non-monogamous arrangements. The challenge lies in balancing these preferences within a committed relationship, ensuring both partners' needs are met and respected. First, let's define the terms. Monogamy refers to a relationship where both partners are committed to one another exclusively. In contrast, non-monogamy includes various relationship arrangements such as polyamory, open relationships, and swinging, where multiple romantic or sexual relationships can coexist. Conley and others, 2012. To navigate the balance between monogamous commitment and non-monogamous preferences, it is crucial to maintain open communication and mutual understanding. Dr. Elizabeth Sheff, a sociologist and author specializing in consensual non-monogamy, emphasizes the importance of honest communication and negotiation in navigating these relationship dynamics. Sheff, 2014. Here are some strategies to help you balance monogamous commitment with non-monogamous preferences. Open and honest communication. Encourage discussions about individual preferences, boundaries, and expectations. Being transparent about your desires and listening to your partner's needs is essential in finding common ground and establishing trust. Establish boundaries. Create clear guidelines and limits for your relationship, addressing issues such as emotional and physical intimacy, time spent with other partners, and relationship hierarchy, if applicable. Both partners should feel comfortable and respected within these boundaries. Continuous check-ins. As relationships evolve, it's essential to have ongoing conversations about how the relationship is functioning and any adjustments that may be necessary. Regular check-ins help ensure that both partners' needs are met and that the connection remains fulfilling. Prioritize emotional well-being. Consider the emotional impact of your relationship arrangements on yourself and your partner. Ensure that your emotional needs are met and address any issues and concerns as they arise. Seek support. Reach out to friends, support groups, or professionals who have experience with non-monogamous relationships. They can provide guidance, advice, and a safe space to discuss your experiences and feelings. 
Balancing monogamous commitment with non-monogamous preferences requires open communication, mutual understanding, and ongoing negotiation. By maintaining honest dialogue, establishing clear boundaries, and prioritizing emotional well-being, couples can navigate this delicate balance and create a fulfilling and respectful relationship for both partners. As you continue your journey towards understanding and balancing monogamous commitment with non-monogamous preferences, remember that honest communication and empathy are essential in building trust and mutual understanding. Embrace the opportunity to learn from your experiences and continually refine your understanding of what works best for you and your partner. For further reading and exploration, we recommend the following books and articles. The Ethical Slut, A Practical Guide to Polyamory, Open Relationships, and Other Adventures by Dossie Easton and Jeanette W. Hardy. Opening Up, A Guide to Creating and Sustaining Open Relationships by Tristan Terramino and Polyamory in the 21st Century, Love and Intimacy with Multiple Partners by Deborah Annapol. By seeking knowledge, fostering open communication, and embracing empathy, you'll be better equipped to navigate the complexities of balancing monogamous commitment with non-monogamous preferences in your relationship. When monogamy meets non-monogamy, navigating the gray area, This section will discuss the complexities in navigating the gray area when monogamy meets non-monogamy. We'll draw on research from various sources to provide a balanced and informative discussion. The gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy refers to a range of relationship dynamics or situations that do not fit neatly into the categories of strictly monogamous or openly non-monogamous. This gray area can include relationships where partners have different preferences or values concerning monogamy or relationships that incorporate monogamy and non-monogamy. Examples of the gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy might include monogamish relationships. Couples who are primarily monogamous but occasionally engage in sexual experiences with others, often with specific boundaries and agreements in place. Situational non-monogamy. Couples who engage in non-monogamous activities only under specific circumstances, such as when apart for extended periods or attending certain events. Emotional monogamy with sexual non-monogamy. Couples who maintain emotional exclusivity with each other, but allow for sexual experiences with others without forming emotional connections. Sexual monogamy with emotional non-monogamy. Couples who maintain sexual exclusivity with each other, but allow for emotional experiences with others without forming sexual connections. Don't ask, don't tell arrangements. Couples who agree to engage in non-monogamous activities, but do not discuss the details with each other. The gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy is complex, encompassing various relationship structures and agreements. Navigating this gray area requires open communication, trust, and a willingness to negotiate boundaries and expectations to ensure that both partners' needs are met and respected. Relationships are diverse, and individuals' preferences regarding monogamy and non-monogamy can vary greatly. The gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy presents unique challenges and opportunities for growth, understanding, and compromise. Maintaining open communication, mutual respect, and trust in these situations is crucial. Dr. Elizabeth Sheff, a sociologist and author specializing in consensual non-monogamy, emphasizes the importance of honest communication and negotiation in navigating relationship dynamics when monogamy meets non-monogamy. Sheff, 2014. Let's explore some strategies for successfully navigating this gray area. Open and honest communication. Encourage discussions about individual preferences, boundaries, and expectations. Being transparent about your desires and listening to your partner's needs is essential in finding common ground and establishing trust. Flexibility and compromise. Understand that relationships evolve and change over time, and be willing to adjust your expectations and boundaries accordingly. Flexibility and compromise are crucial to maintaining a healthy and mutually satisfying relationship. Seek professional support. Couples counseling or therapy can provide guidance and facilitate open communication. A trained professional can help navigate the complexities of balancing monogamous and non-monogamous preferences. Explore new relationship models. Research various relationship models such as polyamory, open relationships, and swinging to understand the spectrum of possibilities better and identify arrangements that may work for you and your partner. Cultivate empathy and understanding. Develop your ability to understand and share the emotions of your partner, which will help foster a supportive and nurturing relationship environment. Navigating the gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy requires open communication, negotiation, and empathy. By maintaining an open dialogue, exploring new relationship models, and prioritizing emotional well-being, 
couples can find a fulfilling and respectful balance for both partners. As you continue your journey towards understanding and navigating the gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy, remember that empathy, communication, and flexibility are essential in building trust and mutual understanding. Embrace the opportunity to learn from your experiences and continually refine your understanding of what works best for you and your partner. For further reading and exploration, we recommend the following books and articles. The Ethical Slut, A Practical Guide to Polyamory, Open Relationships, and Other Adventures by Dossie Easton and Jeanette W. Hardy. Opening Up, A Guide to Creating and Sustaining Open Relationships by Tristan Tuarmino and Polyamory in the 21st Century, Love and Intimacy with Multiple Partners by Deborah Annapol. By seeking knowledge, fostering open communication, and embracing empathy, you'll be better equipped to navigate the complexities of balancing monogamous commitment with non-monogamous preferences in your relationships. Navigating the gray area between monogamy and non-monogamy can be challenging. Still, with open communication, empathy, and a willingness to explore new possibilities, couples can find a balance that works for both partners. It is essential to remain open to learning from your experiences and continually refining your understanding of what works best for you and your partner. As you venture into this uncharted territory, remember there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Instead, focus on finding what works best for you and your partner and be prepared to adapt and grow as your relationship evolves. The Importance of Meeting Each Other's Needs in a Relationship This section will explore the importance of meeting each other's needs in a relationship. We'll discuss various aspects of fulfilling requirements and provide strategies to ensure you and your partner can create a thriving and mutually satisfying relationship. Understanding and meeting your partner's needs is crucial to maintaining a healthy and happy relationship. According to Dr. Gary Chapman, author of the best-selling book, The Five Love Languages, different people express and perceive love in various ways. Chapman, 1995. Recognizing your partner's love language and meeting their emotional needs can strengthen your bond and improve your relationship satisfaction. Dr. John Gottman, a renowned relationship expert and researcher, has identified the sound relationship house theory. This theory emphasizes meeting each other's needs to create a strong foundation for a lasting relationship. Gottman and Silver, 1999. Critical components of this theory including building love maps, sharing fondness and admiration, and turning towards each other. To help ensure that both partners' needs are met in a relationship, consider the following strategies. Open communication. Regularly discuss your individual needs and desires with your partner. These needs include emotional, physical, and practical needs. Be specific and honest about what you require to feel loved and supported. Active listening. Pay close attention to your partner's expressions of their needs and desires. Practice active listening by reflecting on what you hear and ask clarifying questions to show empathy and understanding. Adaptability. Be willing to adjust your behavior and expectations to better meet your partner's needs. This adaptability might mean trying new things, making compromises, or altering your communication style. Emotional attunement. Develop the ability to recognize and respond to your partner's emotions. This emotional attunement can help you better understand their needs and provide the appropriate support and validation. Prioritize quality time. Spend meaningful time together, engaging in activities that you both enjoy that foster connection and intimacy. Show appreciation. Regularly express gratitude and appreciation for your partner's efforts to meet your needs. This appreciation will help reinforce positive behaviors and strengthen your bond. By focusing on understanding and meeting each other's needs in a relationship, you can create a strong foundation for lasting love and happiness. Remember that relationships require ongoing effort, communication, and empathy to thrive. For further reading and resources, we recommend the following books and articles. The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts by Dr. Gary Chapman. The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by Dr. John Gottman and Nan Silver. And Hold Me Tight, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime of Love by Dr. Sue Johnson. As you continue on your journey towards understanding and meeting each other's needs in a relationship, remember that empathy, communication, and adaptability are critical components in building trust and mutual satisfaction. Embrace the opportunity to learn from your experiences and continually refine your understanding of what works best for you and your partner. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast to avoid missing out on future episodes. Remember that understanding and meeting your partner's needs is essential for maintaining a strong, healthy, and satisfying relationship. Open communication, active listening, and adaptability are crucial to ensuring that both partners' needs are met and the relationship continues to grow and flourish. 
As you and your partner continue to navigate your relationship, remember that it's an ongoing process of learning, adjusting, and growing together. Prioritize quality time, emotional attunement, and expressing gratitude and appreciation for one another's efforts to meet each other's needs. Doing so can build a strong foundation for a loving and lasting partnership. In part two of this episode, we explored the complexities of monogamous relationships and how they can coexist with non-monogamous preferences. In part three of this episode, we'll delve into the exciting world of travel and self-discovery and how these experiences can enrich our relationships and personal growth. Part three, travel, self-discovery, and the impact on relationships. In the third part of this episode, we'll discuss how travel and self-discovery can enrich our lives and relationships. We'll explore the benefits of stepping out of our comfort zones, embracing new experiences, and learning from different cultures and perspectives. So buckle up and let's go. The transformative power of travel. In this section, we will discuss the transformative power of travel and its potential effects on monogamous and non-monogamous relationships. We'll dive into how travel can strengthen partnerships, inspire personal growth, and contribute to a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. Travel has long been recognized for its ability to broaden our horizons, expand our minds, and foster personal growth. According to a study by Dr. Julia Zimmerman and Dr. Franz Neyer, published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, travel experience can increase openness, agreeableness, and emotional stability. Zimmerman and Neyer, 2013. By exposing ourselves to new cultures, experiences, and environments, we can learn and grow individually and as partners in a relationship. For monogamous couples, travel can offer a unique experience to strengthen their bond and deepen their connection. By navigating new experiences, partners can develop greater trust, empathy, and understanding. According to Dr. Richard Swanson and Dr. Susan Swanson, authors of The Traveling Relationship, shared travel experiences can increase relationship satisfaction, intimacy, and long-term commitment. Swanson & Swanson, 2010. Non-monogamous relationships can also benefit from the transformative power of travel. Experiencing new cultures and environments can provide valuable insights into different relationship dynamics and models, potentially leading to a greater understanding of one's relationship preferences and values. Additionally, for non-monogamous couples with multiple partners, travel can offer a unique opportunity to explore their connections in different contexts and settings. Travel can also challenge and strengthen relationships by pushing partners out of their comfort zones. Moving partners out of their comfort zones can increase self-awareness, improve communication, and better understand each other's needs and desires. In both monogamous and non-monogamous relationships, the ability to navigate challenges together and adapt to new situations can contribute to a stronger, more resilient partnership. As we journey through new experiences and environments, it is essential to maintain open communication and prioritize our relationships. Whether monogamous or non-monogamous, the transformative power of travel can offer valuable insights and opportunities for growth, both personally and as partners. By embracing travel lessons and experiences, we can deepen our connections, foster greater understanding, and enrich our lives. As you explore the transformative power of travel in your relationships, remember to stay open to new experiences, maintain open communication, and prioritize your connection with your partners. Embrace the opportunity to grow, learn, and evolve individually and as part of a partnership. Stay curious, stay adventurous, and keep exploring the world around you. Stepping out of your comfort zone, embracing new experiences. In this section, we'll discuss stepping out of your comfort zone, particularly in the context of monogamous and non-monogamous relationships, and embracing new experiences, including exploration of sexual preferences. We'll dive into the benefits of pushing our boundaries and learning from these experiences to improve our relationships and personal growth. As humans, we often feel most comfortable with the familiar, However, stepping out of our comfort zones can be an enriching and transformative experience. According to psychologist Dr. Robert Taby, 2017, pushing boundaries can lead to personal growth, increased self-confidence, and a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. When it comes to relationships, whether monogamous or non-monogamous, exploring new experiences can be both exciting and daunting. 
These experiences can include experimenting with different relationship structures, engaging in new sexual experiences, or even discussing previously unexplored fantasies or desires with a partner. By being open to these new experiences, we can learn more about ourselves, our partners, and our preferences. Exploring sexual preferences within the context of a relationship can be an empowering and enlightening experience. According to Dr. Justin Le Miller, a renowned social psychologist and sex researcher, open communication and trust are essential to a healthy sexual exploration within a relationship. Le Miller, 2018. By discussing boundaries and establishing a safe space for open dialogue, couples can begin to explore their desires and experiences together, leading to increased intimacy and connection. In monogamous and non-monogamous relationships, embracing new experiences can strengthen the bond between partners and foster personal growth. For some, this might mean exploring ethical non-monogamy or polyamory, while for others, it may involve experimenting with new sexual experiences within the confines of a monogamous relationship. Regardless of the specific experiences or relationship structures, the key to successful exploration lies in open communication, trust, and mutual respect. You may have noticed this theme of open communication, trust, vulnerability, and mutual respect throughout this podcast. It may seem repetitive, but it bears repeating. For further reading and resources, we recommend the following books and articles. The Comfort Zone Conundrum, How to Get Out of Your Comfort Zone and Live Your Life by Dr. Robert Taby. Tell Me What You Want, The Science of Sexual Desire and How It Can Help You Improve Your Sex Life by Dr. Justin Lee Miller and The Ethical Slut, A Practical Guide to Polyamory, Open Relationships, and Other Freedoms in Sex and Love by Dossie Easton and Janet W. Hardy. As you continue your journey towards stepping out of your comfort zone and embracing new experiences in your relationships, remember that open communication, trust, and mutual respect are vital to ensuring safe and supportive environment for exploration. Embrace the opportunity to learn from your experiences and continually refine your understanding of yourself and your partner. Exploring your sexuality and sexual preferences with your partner can be an exciting and rewarding experience. It's essential to prioritize open communication, trust, and mutual consent to ensure both partners feel comfortable and safe. Here are some examples of safe ways to explore your sexuality and sexual preferences with your partner. Open communication. Have honest conversations about your desires, fantasies, and boundaries. Encourage your partner to do the same and create a judgment-free environment where both of you feel comfortable sharing your thoughts and feelings. Discuss boundaries and consent. Before engaging in any new sexual experiences, discuss your boundaries and establish explicit consent. This discussion will help ensure both partners feel safe and respected during the exploration. Start with small steps. Gradually introduce new experiences or activities to avoid feeling overwhelmed. This gradual introduction can help build trust and comfort between you and your partner as you explore unique aspects of your sexuality together. Experiment with fantasies and role play. Share your fantasies with your partner and explore role playing scenarios that might excite you. Role play can be a fun, creative way to explore different dynamics and desires within a safe and consensual environment. Use sex toys. Introducing sex toys into your relationship can be fun to explore new sensations and experiences together. Be sure to communicate openly about your preferences and comfort levels before using sex toys and always prioritize safety and hygiene. Try new positions or techniques. Expanding your repertoire of sexual positions and strategies can bring novelty and excitement to your intimate experiences. Research new positions or techniques together and experiment with what feels good for both of you. Attend workshops or classes. Participate in workshops or courses on sexuality, relationships, or intimacy. These can provide valuable insights and practical tools to help you explore your sexuality and sexual preferences in a safe and supportive environment. Read books or watch educational content. Educate yourselves on various aspects of sexuality and relationships by reading books, watching documentaries, or engaging with informative online resources. This education can help you expand your knowledge and understanding, leading to more fulfilling and satisfying sexual experiences. Remember, the key to safe exploration of your sexuality and sexual preferences with your partner is open communication, trust, and mutual consent. By prioritizing these aspects and taking time to understand each other's needs and desires, you can embark on a journey of sexual self-discovery that can strengthen your bond and deepen your connection. Question, what about bisexuality? Introducing bisexuality into exploring your sexuality and sexual preferences with your partner can be an enriching experience. It's important to remember that open communication, trust, and mutual consent remain crucial when exploring your sexuality, including bisexuality. Here are some additional points to consider when incorporating bisexuality into your exploration. Discuss your feelings and experiences. 
Have an open and honest conversation with your partner about your feelings, attractions, or experiences related to bisexuality. Encourage your partner to share their thoughts and feelings and create a safe and supportive environment for these discussions. Educate yourselves. Learn about bisexuality and its various aspects, including the experiences of other bisexual individuals and the unique challenges they may face. This education can help you better understand bisexuality and how it may relate to your relationship. Establish boundaries and consent. If you and your partner decide to explore bisexuality, discuss your limits and establish explicit consent before engaging in new experiences. These limits and authorization will help ensure both partners feel safe and respected throughout the exploration. Consider different relationship structures. If one or both partners identify as bisexual, it may be worth discussing other relationship structures such as ethical non-monogamy or polyamory to accommodate the needs and desires of both partners. Remember, open communication and mutual consent are essential when considering any changes to your relationship structure. Seek community and support. Connecting with others who identify as bisexual or have experience with bisexuality can provide valuable insights, support, and guidance as you explore your sexuality. Consider joining local or online groups, attending events, or seeking resources for bisexuality and sexual exploration. Be mindful of stereotypes and stigmas. It's essential to be aware of common stereotypes and stigmas associated with bisexuality, such as the misconception that bisexuality is just a phase or that bisexual individuals are promiscuous. Educate yourselves and challenge these stereotypes to create a more open, accepting, and understanding environment for exploration. By incorporating bisexuality into your exploration of sexuality and sexual preferences with your partner, you can better understand your desires and attractions while fostering a more open and accepting atmosphere within your relationship. Open communication, trust, and mutual consent are vital to ensuring both partners safe and enjoyable exploration experiences. I would recommend the following resources for further reading on bisexuality relationships and sexual exploration. Diamond LM 2008, Sexual Fluidity, Understanding Women's Love and Desire, Harvard University Press. This book discusses sexual fluidity, including bisexuality, and provides insights into the complexities of women's sexual desires. Easton D. and Hardy J.W. 2009, The Ethical Slut, A Practical Guide to Polyamory, Open Relationships, and Other Freedoms in Sex and Love, 10 Speed Press. This book provides guidance and information on various relationship structures, including polyamory and open relationships, which can be helpful for bisexual individuals considering different relationship options. Ox R. and Rally S. 2005. Getting By. Voices of Bisexuals Around the World. Bisexual Resource Center. This book offers a collection of personal stories and experiences from bisexual individuals worldwide, which can provide insights and understanding of the unique aspects of bisexuality. These resources can provide a starting point for further exploration and understanding of bisexuality, relationships, and sexual exploration. Learning from different cultures and perspectives. This section will discuss the value of learning from different cultures and perspectives, particularly in monogamous and non-monogamous relationships. We'll explore how understanding and embracing various relationship styles and practices can enrich our lives and broaden our views on love, commitment, and partnership. There have been diverse approaches to relationships and commitment throughout history and across cultures. While monogamy has been the predominant model in many societies, non-monogamous relationships have also been practiced and accepted in various cultures. By examining these different practices and perspectives, we can gain valuable insights that can help us better understand our relationships and the diverse ways love and commitment can manifest. One notable example of non-monogamous relationships in history is the practice of polygamy among certain indigenous cultures and religious groups. Zitzen, 2008. Having multiple spouses was accepted in these societies and often seen as a sign of social status and wealth. In modern times, polyamory, a form of ethical non-monogamy in which individuals openly maintain multiple romantic relationships with the consent of all parties involved, has gained increased visibility and acceptance. Tormino, 2008. Anthropologist Helen Fisher suggests that humans have a natural capacity for both monogamy and non-monogamy, and that our relationship styles can be influenced by cultural, social, and individual factors. Fisher, 2004. By exploring different cultural practices and perspectives on relationships, we can better understand the diverse ways in which humans can form meaningful connections and partnerships. In both monogamous and non-monogamous relationships, communication, trust, and respect are vital to maintaining healthy and fulfilling connections. By learning from different cultures and perspectives, we can develop a more inclusive and open-minded understanding of relationships, fostering deeper connections with our partners and cultivating a greater appreciation for the diverse ways love and commitment can manifest. For further reading on this topic, we recommend the following books and articles. Sex at Dawn, How We Mate, 
Why We Stray, and What It Means for Modern Relationships by Christopher Ryan and Casilda Jetha. The Polyamorists Next Door, Inside Multiple Partner Relationships and Families by Elizabeth Sheff, and Polygamy, a Cross-Cultural Analysis by Miriam Zietzen. The Impact of Travel on Relationships, Strengthening Bonds, and Fostering Growth. Travel has long been recognized as an opportunity for personal growth and self-discovery. It allows us to step out of our comfort zones, immerse ourselves in new cultures, and gain fresh perspectives. When shared with a partner or partners, travel can also be a powerful catalyst for relationship growth as it presents unique opportunities for bonding, communication, and shared experiences. In monogamous relationships, travel can create a shared sense of adventure and help couples better understand each other's preferences, desires, and boundaries. For example, a study published in the Journal of Travel Research found that couples who travel together report higher levels of relationship satisfaction and increased intimacy. Pritchard, Havitz, and Howard, 1999. Traveling together can also help couples navigate challenges and overcome obstacles, fostering greater resilience and teamwork in their relationships. In non-monogamous relationships, travel can be a platform for exploring different relationship dynamics, negotiating boundaries, and building trust among all involved partners. For instance, Traveling with multiple partners can provide opportunities for open communication, shared experiences, and exploring different cultural norms related to relationships and commitment. The shared experience can help build trust and understanding among all partners and create a strong foundation for successful non-monogamous relationships. Travel also offers a unique opportunity for individuals within monogamous and non-monogamous relationships to explore their personal growth and development. By engaging with different cultures, perspectives, and experiences, individuals can better understand their values, beliefs, and desires. This personal growth can translate into more robust, resilient relationships as partners grow together and share their newfound knowledge and insights. In summary, travel can profoundly impact relationships, both monogamous and non-monogamous. By fostering growth, strengthening bonds, and deepening connections between partners, by embracing the transformative power of travel and actively engaging with new experiences and perspectives, couples and individuals can nurture their relationships and enhance their personal growth. For further reading on this topic, we recommend the following resources. Bell S. and Mill RR, 2012, The Impact of Relationship Length on the Experience and Management of Desire Discrepancy in Long-Term Relationships, Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy, 38 2, pages 159 through 178. In this article, the authors examine how desire discrepancy evolves in long-term relationships, shedding light on the factors affecting relationship satisfaction and offering suggestions for managing differences in desire levels. Perel E. 2007, Mating in Captivity, Unlocking Erotic Intelligence, HarperCollins. Esther Perel's groundbreaking book delves into the complexities of maintaining passion and desire in long-term relationships, offering a fresh perspective on how to cultivate erotic intelligence and navigate the challenges of modern love. Finding Balance, How to Maintain Relationships While Embracing Personal Growth. In this section, we're going to discuss the delicate balance of maintaining relationships, both monogamous and non-monogamous, while embracing personal growth. We'll also explore the concept of interdependence as the key to nurturing healthy, fulfilling relationships that support individual growth and development. In any relationship, Personal growth is crucial for maintaining a robust and healthy connection with one's partner or partners. However, balancing individual development and maintaining a relationship can be challenging. Creating a relationship dynamic that supports and encourages personal growth while fostering deep connections and shared experiences is essential. Interdependence, a balance of autonomy and connectedness, is often considered the key to successful relationships. Rustbolt and Van Lang, 2003. In an interdependent relationship, partners can maintain individuality and pursue personal growth while nurturing a strong, supportive connection. This delicate balance allows both partners to grow and develop individually, ultimately strengthening the relationship. Here are some strategies for maintaining relationships while embracing personal growth with a focus on fostering interdependence. Open communication. Encourage honest, open communication with your partner or partners about your individual needs, desires, and goals. This communication can help create a supportive environment where personal growth is encouraged and celebrated. Markman and others, 2010. Support each other's goals. Actively support and encourage your partner's personal growth by showing interest in their goals, offering appropriate assistance, and celebrating their achievements. Create shared experiences. Engage in activities that promote personal growth and strengthen your bond. 
These shared experiences can foster a sense of connectedness and deepen your understanding of one another. Gottman and Silver, 1999. Maintain personal interests. Encourage each other to pursue individual interests and passions. By maintaining a sense of autonomy, both partners can continue to grow and develop as individuals. Practice self-awareness. Develop a strong self-awareness and regularly reflect on your personal growth and its impact on your relationship. This reflection can help you remain grounded and ensure that your individual development does not come at the expense of your connection with your partner or partners. You can create a strong foundation for individual growth and relationship success by fostering interdependence in your relationships. For further reading on this topic, we recommend the following resources. Rustbold C. E. and Van Lang, P. A. M., 2003. Interdependence, Interaction, and Relationships. Annual Review of Psychology, 54, pages 351 to 375. This comprehensive review article delves into the fundamental concepts of interdependence, interaction, and their effects on relationships. The authors explore how these factors influence relationship development, maintenance, and dissolution, providing a solid theoretical foundation for understanding the dynamics of interpersonal relationships. Markman, H. J., Stanley, S. M., and Blumberg, S. L., 2010. Fighting for Your Marriage, Jossie Bass. A valuable resource for couples looking to strengthen their relationships, this book offers research-based strategies and practical advice for improving communication, managing conflict, and enhancing marital satisfaction. The author draws from decades of experience in relationship education to guide building a solid and lasting partnership. Gottman, J. M., and Silver, N., 1999. The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work, Crown Publishing Group. Based on extensive research and clinical experience, this best-selling book presents seven fundamental principles proven to help couples maintain a happy and healthy marriage. Written by renowned relationship expert John Gottman and journalist Nan Silver, this book provides practical tools and techniques for fostering trust, respect, and love within a committed relationship. And finally, the book Integral Relationships, A Manual for Men by Martin Yusick, published in 2010 by Integral Publishers. Integral Relationships, A Manual for Men is an enlightening guide that blends the wisdom of integral theory, the human developmental model formulated by philosopher Ken Wilber, with the realm of love and romantic partnerships. Author Martin Yusick expertly lays out an approach for men and women to better understand and navigate the complex dynamics of relationships taking into account various aspects of human development, including the psychological, cultural, and spiritual. This book serves as a comprehensive resource, empowering men and women to foster relationships that are healthy, fulfilling, and mutually growth-enhancing. With its detailed analysis, real-life examples, and practical advice, Integral Relationships is a must-read for anyone seeking to deepen their understanding of romantic partnerships in the context of personal and spiritual growth. Integrating Lessons from Travel and Self-Discovery into Everyday Life This section will discuss integrating the lessons learned from travel and self-discovery into everyday life and how these experiences can enrich monogamous and non-monogamous relationships. By incorporating these lessons and experiences into our daily lives, we can foster personal growth and strengthen our connections with our partner or partners. Travel and self-discovery provide valuable lessons and insights, many of which can be applied to our relationships in daily lives. From exploring new cultures and perspectives to pushing our boundaries and stepping out of our comfort zones, these experiences can help us grow as individuals and enhance our relationships. Here are some strategies for integrating these lessons into your everyday life. Reflect on your experiences. Regularly reflect on your travel experiences and the personal growth you've experienced. This reflection can help you identify the lessons and insights that have significantly impacted your life and relationships. Cousineau, 2009. Share your insights with your partner. Openly discuss your experiences and the lessons you've learned from your partner or partners. This discussion can create opportunities for deeper connections and shared understanding, fostering more robust, more resilient relationships. Gottman and Silver, 1999. Practice mindfulness. Incorporate mindfulness into your daily life to maintain a sense of presence and awareness. Mindfulness can help you stay connected to your travel experiences and the lessons you've learned, allowing you to apply these insights to your relationships and personal growth. Kabat-Zinn, 2009. Embrace change. Recognize that personal growth often involves change and adaptation, both in yourself and your relationships. B. 
Be open to embracing these changes and working with your partners to adapt and grow together. Apply lessons to everyday life. Actively seek opportunities to apply your lessons from travel and self-discovery to your daily life and relationships. This application can help you maintain a sense of growth and development even when you're not traveling. Cousineau, 2009. By integrating the lessons learned from travel and self-discovery into our everyday lives, we can foster personal growth and strengthen our relationships, whether monogamous or non-monogamous. For further reading on this topic, we recommend the following resources. Cousineau, P. 2009, The Art of Pilgrimage, The Seeker's Guide to Making Travel Sacred, Connery Press. This inspiring book explores the concept of pilgrimage as a transformative journey and offers guidance on making travel a more meaningful and spiritual experience. Drawing on wisdom from various traditions and cultures, the author provides practical advice and insights to help seekers embrace the sacred in their travels. Gottman, J.M. and Silver, N. 1999, The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work, Crown Publishing Group. Based on extensive research and clinical experience, this best-selling book presents seven critical principles proven to help couples maintain a happy and healthy marriage. Written by renowned relationship expert John Gottman and journalist Non Silver, this book provides practical tools and techniques for fostering trust, respect, and love within a committed relationship. Cabot Zinn, J. 2009. Wherever you go, there you are. Mindfulness, meditation, and everyday life. Hatchet Books. In this influential book, John Cabot Zinn introduces the concept of mindfulness meditation and explains its potential benefits for mental and physical well-being. Accessible and engaging, the book provides practical guidance on incorporating mindfulness practices into daily life, helping readers cultivate greater self-awareness, inner peace, and resilience. Once again, thank you for joining us on today's episode of Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. These strategies and insights will help you integrate the lessons from travel and self-discovery into your everyday life and relationships. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you can experience future episodes that explore various aspects of personal growth, relationships, and more. As we wrap up part three of this podcast episode, let's take a moment to reflect on the powerful insights we've explored today. We've discussed the transformative power of travel and how stepping out of your comfort zone can lead to personal growth and new experiences. By immersing ourselves in different cultures and perspectives, we can gain valuable knowledge and a deeper understanding of the world. We've also explored the impact of travel on relationships, highlighting the potential for strengthening bonds and fostering growth between partners. By finding balance and maintaining relationships while embracing personal change, we can continue to nurture our connections with loved ones even as we embark on our unique journeys. Lastly, we've examined the importance of integrating the lessons learned from travel and self-discovery into our everyday lives. This integration allows us to continuously evolve and maintain the benefits of personal growth, even when we're not exploring far-off destinations. In summary, travel can transform our perspectives, relationships, and sense of self. By embracing new experiences, learning from diverse cultures, and finding balance in our personal and relational growth, we can enrich our lives and create lasting, meaningful connections. As you continue your journey of self-discovery, whether through travel or other means, remember to stay open to new experiences, cultivate empathy, and integrate the lessons learned into your everyday life. So far, this four-part series has explored the intricacies of ethical non-monogamy, monogamous relationships, and the transformative power of travel and self-discovery. We hope these insights and ideas have provided valuable tools for navigating relationships and personal growth. In part four, we will examine cheating in both monogamous and non-monogamous relationships. Part 4, Cheating is Cheating. We released this part of the podcast as a separate episode earlier on, so if you've already heard that episode, this will be a repeat for you. If not, let's continue as this is a topic that must be explored. Cheating is Cheating, a unified look at monogamy and ENM agreements. Cheating, or infidelity, 
has been a topic of interest and concern in romantic relationships throughout human history. The concept of fidelity varies across cultures and relationship structures, making it essential to understand the differences in how cheating is defined and experienced in monogamous versus ethically non-monogamous or ENM relationships. This article will explore these differences by examining the unique features of each relationship type, the psychological and emotional factors contributing to infidelity, and the impact of cheating on both partners involved. Defining Cheating in Monogamous and Ethically Non-Monogamous Relationships Monogamous Relationships In monogamous relationships, cheating is generally defined as engaging in a romantic or sexual interaction with someone other than one's committed partner without their knowledge or consent. Mark, 2011. This violation of trust and exclusivity often leads to feelings of betrayal, hurt, and confusion for the deceived partner. Ethically Non-Monogamous Relationships Ethically non-monogamous relationships, which include polyamory, open relationships, and swinging, involve multiple romantic or sexual partners with the knowledge and consent of all parties involved. Barker and Langridge, 2010. In these relationships, cheating is not defined by engaging with multiple partners, but rather by violating the agreed-upon agreements and communication guidelines. The and Rickert, 2014. Factors contributing to cheating in monogamous and ENM relationships. Monogamous relationships. Several factors may contribute to cheating in monogamous relationships, such as dissatisfaction with the current relationship, unmet emotional or sexual needs, desire for novelty or excitement, and individual personality traits. Mark and others, 2011. Research has shown that individuals more prone to infidelity tend to have higher levels of narcissism, less empathy, and a greater propensity for risk-taking. Buss and Shackelford, 1997. Ethically non-monogamous relationships. In ENM relationships, cheating may occur when individuals struggle to adhere to the established agreements, experience jealousy or insecurity, or fail to communicate effectively about their desires and expectations. Barker and Langridge, 2010. Some research suggests that individuals in ENM relationships may have a higher tendency for emotional regulation and communication skills, which helps reduce the likelihood of cheating. Conley and others, 2017. Impact of cheating on partners in monogamous and ENM relationships. Monogamous relationships. Cheating in monogamous relationships leads to significant emotional distress for both partners, loss of trust, and potential relationship disillusion. Mark and others, 2011. For the deceived partner, feelings of betrayal, anger, and low self-esteem may result, while the cheating partner may experience guilt, regret, and fear of being discovered. Shackelford and others, 2004. Ethically non-monogamous relationships Although cheating in ENM relationships may not involve the same level of betrayal as in monogamous relationships, it still leads to emotional distress and the potential breakdown of trust. Barker and Langridge, 2010 Both partners may experience insecurity, jealousy, and confusion, particularly if the cheating partner has violated previously agreed-upon boundaries and agreements. Vo and Rickard, 2014 Understanding the difference in cheating between monogamous and ethically non-monogamous relationships is crucial in fostering healthy communication and trust within these diverse relationship structures. While monogamous relationships emphasize exclusivity and commitment, ethically, non-monogamous relationships prioritize open communication, flexibility, and negotiating agreements in addition to commitment. Despite these differences, cheating in both relationship types leads to emotional distress, loss of trust, and potential disillusion. To maintain healthy and satisfying relationships, individuals in both monogamous and ethically non-monogamous partnerships need to discuss their expectations, desires, and concerns openly. By fostering honest communication, practicing emotional regulation, and respecting each other's boundaries, partners can navigate the complexities of modern romantic relationships and significantly reduce the risk of cheating. Question: How is an ethically non-monogamous relationship not cheating? You are having sexual or emotional connections with other people, after all. The landscape of modern romantic relationships has diversified in recent years, with more individuals exploring alternative relationship structures like ethically non-monogamous ENM partnerships. However, misconceptions about ENM relationships often lead to assumption that they are inherently unfaithful or less committed than monogamous partnerships. Let's clarify why ENM relationships are not cheating by nature and discuss the differences between ENM and monogamous relationships regarding fidelity and commitment. Defining Ethically Non-Monogamous Relationships 
ENM relationships encompass various forms of consensual non-monogamy, including polyamory, open relationships, and swinging. Barker and Langridge, 2010. These relationships involve multiple romantic or sexual partners with the knowledge and consent of all parties involved. In contrast to cheating, which typically involves deception and betrayal, ENM relationships prioritizes open communication, flexibility, and the negotiation of agreements. Vo and Record, 2014. Cheating and Fidelity in ENM Relationships In ENM relationships, cheating is not defined by engaging with multiple partners, but rather by violating the agreed-upon agreements and communication guidelines. Vo and Record, 2014. Fidelity in these relationships is expressed through adherence to the established agreements, respect for each partner's autonomy, and commitment to maintaining open and honest communication. Barker and Langridge, 2010. For example, if partners agree that they will not engage in a one-night stand with someone they just met, and a partner ends up doing so, that partner has cheated. Cheating and Fidelity in Monogamous Relationships In monogamous relationships, cheating is typically defined as engaging in romantic or sexual interactions with someone other than one's committed partner without their knowledge or consent. Mark, 2011. Fidelity in these relationships is expressed through exclusivity and commitment to only one partner, and cheating, whether sexually or emotionally, is considered a significant violation of trust. Shackleford and others, 2004. The importance of consent and communication in ENM relationships. One key factor distinguishing ENM relationships from cheating is the presence of enthusiastic consent and open communication among all involved parties. Barker and Langridge, 2010. In ENM partnerships, individuals willingly engage in non-monogamous dynamics with clear boundaries and expectations established through ongoing discussions. Vo and Record, 2014. This emphasis on consent and communication allows far greater transparency and trust in ENM relationships, significantly reducing the likelihood of deception or harmful behavior. Conley and others, 2017. For more information regarding the differences between boundaries, agreements, and rules, please check out episode 25, Navigating Ethical Non-Monogamy, Clearing Boundaries, Agreements, and Rules for Respectful Relationships. Challenging Stereotypes and Misconceptions About ENM Relationships Despite growing acceptance of diverse relationship structures, ENM relationships are often unfairly labeled as inherently unfaithful or less committed than monogamous partnerships. Barker and Langridge, 2010. While it is a fact that some people do get into non-monogamy because they are afraid of commitment, that is not the case for all. For more information about why some people avoid commitment, check out our podcast episode 45, Unlocking Love, Navigating Attachment and Emotional Vulnerability, and episode 48, Unlocking Fearful Attachment, Healing Bonds for a Secure Future. While ENM relationships are often unfairly labeled as inherently unfaithful or less committed than monogamous partnerships, Research has shown that ENM individuals can form deep emotional connection and maintain long-term, lifelong, committed relationships. Moores and Others, 2014. By challenging the stereotypes of being unfaithful and non-committal and promoting a broader understanding of fidelity and commitment, society can foster greater acceptance and support for these diverse relationship structures. It is essential to remember that ethically non-monogamous relationships are not inherently unfaithful or less committed than monogamous partnerships. By redefining cheating and fidelity within the context of ENM relationships, it becomes clear that successful ENM partnerships are built on high levels of enthusiastic consent, secure attachment styles, communication, and mutual respect. As society continues to evolve and embrace diverse relationship structures, it is crucial to challenge misconceptions and stereotypes that contribute to the stigmatization of ENM relationships. By recognizing that ethically non-monogamous relationships prioritize consent, communication, and adherence to established agreements, it becomes evident that they are not synonymous with cheating. In fact, ENM relationships can offer unique opportunities for personal growth, self-discovery, and exploring diverse relationship dynamics not found in monogamous relationships. Barker and Langridge, 2010. Furthermore, research has indicated that ENM individuals often possess powerful communication skills and emotional intelligence, contributing to relationship satisfaction and stability. Conley and others, 2017. Ultimately, the key to understanding why ENM relationships are not cheating lies in acknowledging the fundamental differences in how fidelity and commitment are defined and enacted within these diverse relationship structures. By fostering open-mindedness and empathy, 
society can support individuals in pursuing the relationship models that best align with their values, desires, and needs. Shout out to Bex Hayes for suggesting this part on cheating, and ideas for the title. As we draw to a close on this expansive episode of our podcast, we hope the conversations, insights, and personal experiences we've shared today have given you a new perspective on non-monogamy, monogamy, and the profound impact travel can have on our relationships, in addition to how cheating is defined and why cheating is cheating. From our discussion on ethical non-monogamy to our exploration into the realm of monogamy, we've aimed to shed light on the importance of open communication, secure attachment styles, trust, embracing vulnerability, and understanding. We've explored the challenges and triumphs of different relationship models, acknowledging the nuances and complexities that come with each. Our journey into the world of travel and its transformative power on relationships has hopefully inspired you to broaden your horizons, embrace new cultures, and apply the lessons learned in strengthening your bonds and fostering personal growth. In our final segment, we revisited the topic of cheating within relationships, touching on its occurrence in both monogamous and non-monogamous scenarios. We hope this segment offered you further insight into maintaining integrity and trust within your relationships. Remember, whether you've listened to the entire episode or tuned into specific sections, each moment offers the chance for learning and growth. And as we've reiterated throughout the episode, repetition can be a powerful tool for deepening our understanding. Also remember that the key to any lifelong partnership or partnerships must have the following elements, secure attachment styles, trust, open communication, the act of embracing vulnerability, empathy, interdependence, and personal growth. While we might assume that these would be the default settings, the data shows otherwise, and it can be rare to find someone with all of these qualities. It is entirely worth learning to identify people with these qualities. We want to thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. We hope you leave this episode feeling inspired, thoughtful, and armed with new insights to bring into your relationships and personal development. Until our next episode, continue to love fearlessly, communicate openly, and journey boldly. This is your host, Daniel Boyd, signing off from another hopefully enriching episode of our podcast, Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. As always, our sources are in the description. Goodbye for now, and keep exploring the many dimensions of love and relationships. Okay.